And today it's San Francisco and the Bills playoff challenge grows. NBC Sports presents the National Football League. Today, it's the Buffalo Bills versus the San Francisco 49ers. Partly cloudy, 60 degrees in San Francisco, 60,000 plus at Candlestick Park. It has been a euphoric week. The 49ers have locked up all the advantages going into the playoffs as they defend their Super Bowl championship. And for Buffalo, two teams chasing them in the AFC East are matched up today. And look at that when the Colts are bombing Miami 42-13. That means that a win by Buffalo today, as you look at the standings, would clinch the AFC East as the Bills have the advantage in the tiebreaker system over both the Dolphins and the Colts. So Buffalo gets good news as we come in. Uh, Bill Walsh for the 49ers with their big win on Monday night. That was a resurrection night just to come back. Montana won't play today. Not in uniform. Steve Young gets the start. Is that an indication that they're not taking this game that seriously? Well Dick, Steve Young has been sensational when he started. The 49ers have a number of younger players on that lineup. That means they're really ready to play. Plus that they have a standard performance. Playing the football the right way means an awful lot to them. And the 49ers on a high, and the Bills the last two weeks have been on a low. Well, they have. They have seven weeks in which uh, Kelly played beautifully. The last two, he's failed. The team has failed. They're distressed and upset. Uh, a few weeks ago, they were on top of the world. Right now, they're struggling. But they can get it done today. A, a win today will get them a division championship, and that can make a big difference. And the Bills and Marv Levy will get the ball on the opening kickoff, winning the toss. Levy's record with Buffalo and now his fourth season. Last two weeks, his team in an offensive slump, and they've not played well in December. They've not played well on the road in this decade of the 80s. And there's Jim Kelly. He's uh, the focal point of the offense and the team. He is the leader and was criticized by his teammate Thurman Thomas this past week. But they've made amends and in the opening lineup introductions today they uh, made sure that they patted each other on the back Mike Kofer will kick it off for San Francisco Don Beebe and Ronnie Harmon are deep for the Bills and White opening kickoff spins down short to Harmon He's out to about the 28-yard line. And under the field comes uh, Jim Kelly, played at Miami of Florida. And this is the offense he brings with him. Will Wolford, Richer, Hull, Devlin, and big uh, House Ballard are the linemen. Thurman Thomas is having a great year. The big fullback is Kinnebrew, Lofton the veteran. Reed, who leads in receptions. The tight end is Metzelars. When they go to three wides, those two men go out. They bring in Don Beebe and Flip Johnson to join Reed. And Metzelars stays in the game. Reed with 72 catches in motion. The give is to Thurman Thomas. He plows to the 30-yard line, maybe the 31, against the 49er defense. Pierce Holt made the tackle. He's on the top of the list in sacks as well with 10 and a half. Bert, the former Giant, Kevin Fagan, Charles Haley, Millen, Walter, and Romanowski, the linebackers. Keena Turner won't play today. Pollard and Griffin at the corners. Brooks and Lott are the safeties. That's their base defense. And when they bring in their nickel package, we'll introduce the new players. Second and seven for Kelly. Not much in the center of that 49er defense as Larry Kennebrew, the 256-pound fullback, runs right into Jim Burt. Here comes Jackson and Roberts, part of the package against the pass. Roberts, one of the four down linemen, and then the defensive backfield looks this way with Johnny Jackson and Tom Homo making it six defensive backs. Well, they've run according to script so far, Dick. Two runs, very little yardage. Now they're going to have to throw. One of the criticisms of Ted Marchabrot has been the play calling. Jim Kelly himself has been concerned about it because of the conservative approach to it. On third and five, underneath to Reed, and he has a first down at the 39. Andre Reed, that's his 73rd catch. He is the first Bill in history to catch more than 300. Albert Dubinian at 296 the former leader and with 73 he's building on his team record on a season well the play calling will be interesting at this point they've run twice gotten very little they're going to have to open the game up to match 
yardage with the 49ers because we know when the 49ers get it they're most likely to move it especially well being a great offensive team here they are opening the formation maybe we'll see a pass from the 39 Kelly underneath it's Reed again and Andre Reed out of bounds with a 10 yard gain at his own 49 yard line Chuck Brooks and Ronnie Lott ran him out well, the secondary, the 49ers, is really thin for this game. Uh, they're not going to have the substitution they need. They have Eric Wright out. They have any number of people that aren't playing. Uh, Tim McTire, yes. So they're thin, and they're going to get fatigued. If Buffalo throws the ball, we'll see some problems in that secondary in the second half. 49-year-old George Seifert, former head coach at Cornell, worked under Bill Walsh as an assistant, both at Stanford and here at San Francisco. First down at midfield for Buffalo. Kennebrew. The big guy gets a couple. Pierce Michael Holt. Walter finished the job of Pierce Holtz. Jim Kelly. Boy, a key on him is if he doesn't throw an interception, look what happens. Five wins. He's thrown 15 touchdowns and only one interception. But in the six losses when he has started, eight touchdown passes, 13 interceptions. Of course, he missed three games. Frank Wright. His substitute went 3 and 0. On second and long, Kelly fires and hits. It is Reed again, and Daryl Pollard made the tackle. Andre Reed, who has worked hard to improve himself, an outstanding receiver. He may well be on his way to the Pro Bowl. Well, Reed just runs a simple slant, but the throw itself is what's impressive. Right up above the numbers. Excellent concentration. Now, Pollard's had problems playing that corner, and Reed's going to be in front of him all day, so that may be the formula that Buffalo needs to get the job done. Reed, a high school quarterback in Allenton, Pennsylvania, went to Cootstown State. He's caught three on this drive, and it's a first down at the 937. Underneath an incomplete this time to Reed, who was open again. Kelly was being pressured by Kevin Fagan. Charles Haley was there as well. Fagan really got up underneath Kelly that time. Both Holt and Fagan are powerful, explosive men. Not tall, rangy, but powerful squat guys that can come up and take the side of a tackler. So that was a beautiful job of penetration from both sides of Kelly. He had nowhere to go but throw the ball a little early. Taking a fourth round pick out of Miami of Florida three years ago. And another ex hurricane at the controls. Kelly on second and ten. Incomplete as he was unable to find Reed this time over the middle in a crowd. Kelly was anxious that time, Dick. He had some heat on him. He threw the ball too early. There's a hooking pattern, but the ball was thrown before the receiver could even get his head around. So that pressure right now, it looks like it's going to trouble Jim. And if it does, they're in for a long day. He can certainly throw the ball well enough. That's not a problem at all. It's the execution of those kinds of things. And this is the number one offense in the American Conference. They're third in running the ball, second in passing. Kelly stumbled last week against New Orleans and the week before at Seattle. Third and ten. And incomplete. Andre Reed was the intended target, but Kelly saw Fagan right in his face. Well, he had a receiver open. The, bo the ball was uh, thrown too far. Kelly had again to throw it inaccurately because of the pressure up front. He's in pretty good position right here, but he's waiting for a corner pattern to develop. You see Mike Waller putting the pressure on, and again, Fagan's coming up underneath and getting to Kelly, and he can't protect himself from that kind of a rush. Takes the Bills out of field goal range, and John Kidd into punt. And the former Northwestern kicker sends a dying spiral to the sidelines and out of bounds at about the 11 the 12 yard line they'll mark it so the 49ers will get the ball for the first time as Buffalo spent three 
minutes and 50 seconds. Got into San Francisco territory with three first downs, but unable to get any points. Bubba Paris, Guy McIntyre, Sapolo, Colley, and Barton, the offensive line for San Francisco. Steve Young, the left-hander from BYU, is the quarterback. Roger Craig and Tom Rathman, that great pair of backs for San Francisco, with Taylor off a career night in uh, Los Angeles, and Jerry Rice, Brent Jones, the tight end, and uh, when they go to an extra man Wesley Walls comes in as a second tight end four touchdown passes for Jack Trudeau his career high the best game I'm sure in his entire career accepting congratulations from all of his teammates and Budweiser will make a contribution to the United Way on behalf of all of the MVPs selected in all of today's games. Trudeau Trudeau would tell you hey three was my high <laughs> okay. yeah. he'd only had two before today he's gone to three and now to four Ivy Joe Hunter the rookie out of Kentucky. And the Colts just running the clock down. Charlie, if I were a Miami Dolphin player and I had one wish right now, right at this moment, it would be that someone would buy me a ticket so I didn't have to go back on the plane with Don Shula because it's going to be a very long flight. It always is when you lose. Know that there'll be introspection from some very proud, some very proud Dolphins who have been embarrassed here today. But they have one more game against Kansas City, and they need some help. The Colts have one more against New Orleans, and they need some help. Maybe that's the nicest part. And uh, Ron Meyer said it earlier. He said, "You know, they tried to put us in the coffin earlier. We ain't dead yet. Well, Miami's not dead yet." But they died a pretty rugged death here today. Ron Meyer also said the gods of football owe us a few more, and I'm not letting them off the hook, and he got one of them back today. Well, there's a handshake between two coaches who have tracked their season in this up and down and vacillating year. Jack Trudeau shaking hands with his counterpart, Dan Marino. The final, the Colts 42, the Dolphins 13. And we'll be back in just a moment. It's a Radio Shack Merry Christmas. America shops at Radio Shack for everything in radios. Radios for wake-ups, sit-ups, weather casts, newscasts, see beers. See oh, Barry Helton's punt very high. Sutton at his 41-yard line. And it's about eight to the 49. Let's check the other scores on this, the next to last Sunday of the regular season. Cincinnati big against Houston. Cleveland hanging on by four at home. Green Bay has built a nine-point lead at Chicago. Indianapolis, a final, defeats Miami. And San Diego trying to spoil Kansas City's uh, dream season. Pittsburgh, impressive against New England. And Detroit wins another game, and big. Late game. Jets and Rams scoreless. Atlanta has a 3 nothing lead against the Skins. Here no score. Second possession for Buffalo. Just across their own 48-yard line. Thurman Thomas out on a wing and the give to Kennebrew who's into San Francisco territory. And it takes four red shirts to get him down inside the 45. Michael Walder, who leads the 49ers in tackles, number 99, was amongst the pack. Well, Kennebrew's power really demonstrated itself there. Marv Levy likes having Kennebrew, not so much for this running, but he says his blocking is much better than he anticipated. So this could be a fixture in their, in their backfield now. This big, powerful man running their short yardage kind of plays, but his blocking, having that great blocking for Thomas is critical. Second and a long two. Oops, movement by the right tackle, Howard Ballard. And the 325-pounder missed the snap count. Ballard just jumped a little bit early. There's no, there's no question about that. And uh, it's hard to explain those kinds of things. He had a big block on Holt. He moves in front of Holt. I don't believe that he'd be intimidated by Holt. So uh, just chalk it up. But if it were to happen too many times naturally, the continuity would break down. Buffalo needs every play to go just right against this kind of an opponent. Well, it's well scoring the defensive uh, 
coach said uh, we can't waste any downs. That's one thing that impressed him about San Francisco. Out of the backfield, Thurman Thomas unable to wrap it up as Chet Brooks was covering him. That was an interesting comment by Corey and in, in, uh, looking at the films of San Francisco. Corey saying they just don't waste downs and never quite heard it expressed that way that they're so efficient and that's what he wants from uh, his own team the Buffalo Bills. Well it's, it's the completion percentage virtually every pass San Francisco's thrown this year has been a completion so there isn't the incomplete pass that gives the defense a little helping hand. Everything's a completion. That should have been that last play but it was one of the toughest plays to throw a back breaking into the flat and the quarterback having to hit him just right. Kelly from the shotgun. And he's going long, has a man open, Flip Johnson, and what a defensive play by Don Griffin. Halfway there, that appeared to have touchdown written on it, and Griffin, exploding to the ball, was able to get a hand on it and bat it away. This, this was a good defensive play, but on the far side of the field, we can't see it now. Ronnie Harmon is completely uncovered. No one covered him down the field. Kelly just missed finding the proper guy. Harmon totally uncovered. They'll come back to it later. John Kidd punts. John Taylor, who made the Pro Bowl last year as a punt returner, takes it on the run. And he is twisted out of bounds at the 31-yard line. John Taylor, what a game on Monday night, the first time in NFL history that uh, a man was able to run for two touchdowns with a pass in a single game of more than 90 yards. Final, Indianapolis has defeated Miami. We gave that to you earlier. So the Colts and Miami now tied. One full game behind uh, Buffalo. If Buffalo wins today. They clinch the AFC Eastern title. No score, 8.49 remaining in the opening quarter. Each team now with a couple of possessions. Oh, this is the second for Steve Young, who is in for Joe Montana. Montana with a rib injury. They did not even dress him. George Seifert didn't even want to be tempted in using Montana today. Young fires and hits as he goes to Taylor. And that'll be a first down out at the 43-yard line. A dozen yards to Taylor who has 10 touchdown passes this year, 59 that, catches. That is really concentration. You see Taylor coming off the ball. Now that is tight, as tight a coverage as you can get by Odoms. That ball is right inside. Odoms almost makes a play, but again, Taylor's concentration makes a difference. He has really developed as one of the great receivers in the game today. He can run with the ball after the catch, but the critical thing in developing him was running distinct sharp patterns coming from Delaware State. He never learned that, that's those skills. He comes out as they go with two tight ends. And they give to Craig. Roger Craig to the 47-yard line. Shane Conlon. Dad was a big fan of Alan Ladd in that great Western movie Shane and named his son after the lead character played by Alan Ladd. Roger Craig, by the way, Dick, is running as hard as he ever has. Not the productivity from the offensive line that they've had in the past. And Roger's been somewhat frustrated. He's averaging just barely four yards a carry this year where it was much higher a year ago. But of course they're winning, so that takes care of everything. On second and seven from the San Francisco 47, they draw to Rathman, and then they throw to Rathman. And Big Tom bowls his way to the 45 and what appears to be a first down. Rathman, who is the number one running back in the league in the reception statistics, that was his 69. Well, Bruce Smith right here is knocked down at the line and he works his way back down the field, knocked out of there. Now his speed really shows up. He gets all the way out to catch Rathman. Rathman, meanwhile, had faked the draw into the line. Roger Craig went down into the corner, pulling the defense deep. Out Rathman came, completely uncovered. But what an athlete Smith is to go down in there and reverse all the way out. Three men blocked him, and he still got out to make the tackle. The toss to Craig. And following Rathman's block, he's to the 40-yard line and out of bounds. Scott Radisick playing for Cornelius Bennett and Leonard Smith collaborate on the stop. There's Radisic, a former Kansas City Chief and member of the 1982 Joe Paterno coached Penn State National Champions. Penn State in the Big Ten. Hmm. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? 
They want Pitt to come along with them, I understand. They really challenge. That would make it a six or seven team league in a sense because some of the teams just aren't up to the competition. Montana spectator today. It's uh, the treatment for the rib injury is about as painful as the actual injury itself. Oh my, Radisek comes through and buries Steve Young, first sack of the game. Well, Smith came up inside and took two blockers with him, letting Radisek come unblocked. Smith's going to come straight up the field here. Goes right by McIntyre. Both Rathman has to get him, and that was Rathman's man to block on a blitz. So Smith will force two people to block him. You see him coming around the outside, and there's Radisson. So on the loss, it's third down for San Francisco and 10. As you look at Bruce Smith, throw ball in the last two years. Ten and a half total. They got a couple last week. He'd been in a bit of a slump after a great start. Whistle blows the play dead before the snap. Dick, I believe that Buffalo's playing well enough to win this game. Not that they, I project that they will, but they're playing football today. They really are. Their defense is tough. And Marv Levy has got them ready. So. All start. 77 offense. Still third down. Baba Paris, who might be a little itchy in uh, pulling off that line of scrimmage with uh, Bruce Smith over his nose. Gets the five yard penalty. Well, McIntyre, 62, and Paris, 77, have got Smith around them somewhere, and he's dynamite. He's just so explosive, and Paris, to be honest with you, is carrying a little extra weight. It's going to be tough for him. On third and 15, Young uncorks a long one, and it is intercepted in the end zone by Mark Kelso. Kelso has his fifth interception of the season, and on the touchback, the Bills will play it from their 20-yard line. Well, in a sense, Smith coming from uh, Young's left makes it very, very tough on Young because he's left-handed, and Smith's right up on his left side. So he throws a, sort of a desperation ball, and Kelso's right in position to make a great interception. Just over the head of Keith Henderson, number 30, and not far enough for John Taylor. Buffalo has the ball. It's been a busy week getting ready for this game. The 49ers, you had to do all your yeah. studying to get to know who these players are. Names. And then you had to, to play Santa Claus as well at the party, the uh, kids' party for San Francisco. Well, I had an assistant coach do it for years, and I told him, someday I'll do it. So it was my turn this week, and uh, I learned a lot of lessons. Not all the children are completely <laughs> relaxed around Santa Claus. They get a little nervous about him. Yeah. Well, the way you kick those elves around, too, probably didn't help. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to give you a sample of... Uh, Bill Walsh in that role later on. Buffalo starts from the 20 after Kelso's interception. Kelly, plenty of time. Down the sideline for Reed. What a catch! And he's finally brought down by Romanowski at the 40. They may say he was uh, out of bounds at the 43. A perfect throw by Kelly. And Reed has his fourth catch already. Well, we, Reed is in motion running up, then out in the flat with Romanowski trying to stay with him. Then he turns. Romanowski's in pretty good position, but what a catch with that traffic. Ronnie Lott bearing in on you, number 42, and he's still able to go down and make that catch. Romanowski on man-to-man uh, -man on a wide receiver? Well, they, that must that's a form of their defense, I guess. Larry Kennebrew runs into his own blocker, Keith McKellar, and then he's pushed back Matt Millen and company. Mike Walter there as well. On our NBC 10-minute ticker, the other scores, oh, Cincinnati just pummeling Houston. Minnesota by three at Cleveland. The Brown slump apparently continuing. Green Bay apparently going to beat Chicago again. Indianapolis has won. San Diego up by seven at Kansas City. Pittsburgh looks to be another winner. And Detroit has the victory against Tampa Bay. Atlanta, 3-0 against the Skins. And here, no score. Buffalo at the San Francisco 40. Second and 10. Second and seven. And the shot is to James Lofton, who played uh, nearby at Stanford University. And uh, Lofton has his seventh catch of the year. Don Griffin with a tackle, a first down Buffalo. Lofton, one of my players at Stanford, uh, my first year in 1977, a great track man. This is an out pattern, but concentrating on this ball because Griffin's right on top of it. But Lofton's a big, powerful man. 
and at one time and still possesses outstanding speed. This is a great throw by Kelly. When I say that, there's a lot on the ball. He gets it there. Kennebrew on first down just ran right over Matt Millen inside the 20. And a good pickup for the Bills who are driving at least into field goal range with 3.20 remaining in this first quarter. George Seifert used the word euphoric when we talked to him yesterday about the victory against the Rams on Monday night. The tremendous comeback in the fourth period. 17 points down. John Taylor Knight in Anaheim. He said, now it's time to prove uh, that we are the Super Bowl team of last year and win another one. Gain respect, fine tune, he used that expression. Kennebrew. Boy, that's a Mack truck that's been fine tuned. He has a first down at the 10 yard line. Chet Brooks was the first to hit him. This is, this is the best that uh, the Buffalo team has looked for some weeks. Now they are ready to play. Now Kennebrew's power really demonstrates itself, but also their off offensive line. 51 Richter really doing a great job. And watch this power. Ronnie Lott right on top of him, but 258 pounds. Boy, is that tough to bring down. It's this is a, this is good as Buffalo's look, Dick, uh, all year. They have a first down just at the 10. Played and almost intercepted. Ronnie Lott was in the thick of things. It appeared to be tight end Keith McKellar, the intended receiver. Ronnie Lott was right on the money. Kelly threw right into a weak safety that time. Crossing tight end, Ronnie Lott breaking on the ball. You see Kelly throw, but watch Lott coming from right into the middle. He's got a chance for a big interception, but there's a lot of traffic. And that would have been a record interception. He's currently tied all time with Jimmy Johnson for the San Francisco career lead with 47. We welcome those of you who have seen Pittsburgh beat New England. Here no score, but the Bills threaten on second down from the San Francisco 10. Andre Reed, the target. Daryl Pollard, the cover man. It'll be third down and 10. Well, congratulations to Chuck Knoll and his young Steeler team rallying from that dismal start 0-2 and uh, keeping themselves at least in position they need a lot of things to happen to even uh, hope for wild card but they have had a grand second half of the season well it's just a steady methodical a coach uh, approach to coaching that Chuck Noll used Chuck, Chuck Noll uses and, and they'll come through with just marginal talent sooner or later the consistency begins to demonstrate itself third and goal Kelly Going to scramble. Ronnie Lott is there. Lott reading, hanging on the goal line, waiting for Kelly to make his move. And as soon as the all-pro Lott saw him cross that scrimmage line, he came up to build him at the five-yard line. Many thought that Lott wouldn't play today. He's got a series of nagging injuries, but tough to keep him uh, out of the lineup, as you learned, Bill. Ronnie Lott will be sitting right back here. And as Kelly runs, Lott is such a force, I think he honestly intimidates Kelly from the standpoint of getting what he wants. Now watch him come back into the play right here. Now Kelly sees that and turns away from it. It's understandable. Lott is one of the great hitters that's played the game. Scott Norwood, 23-yard attempt, and Buffalo has the early lead with 114 left in this first quarter. It's the Bills on a short field goal by Norwood taking a 3-0 advantage. NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by the exciting, innovative, unconventional new spirit of Dodge. By United Airlines, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. And by new Keystone and Keystone Light. Bottled beer taste in a can. Wouldn't that be great? AFC Eastern leader, the Buffalo Bills, have a 3-0 advantage here at Candlestick Park as they go for a repeat title under the whip of Jim Kelly, who took them after the Kelso interception from the 20 deep into San Francisco territory to the 5 and settled for Norwood's 23-yard field goal. And now Norwood to kick it off. Terrence Flagler and Spencer Tillman. Tillman on the near side, deep for the Niners. A low driving kick. Tillman, the ex-oiler, bobbles, and here he comes. And he's met at the 23-yard line. Mickey Sutton was first down to slow him up. 
And we have a timeout, 104 left in the opening period. Joe Montana having a sensational season. A great quarterback having perhaps his greatest year. Monday night setting a team record with a 458 yards. His completion percentage over 71%. We welcome those of you who have seen the Chargers upset the Kansas City Chiefs 20 to 13. That knocks Kansas City out of any playoff hopes, but Marty Schottenheimer with a solid first year at Arrowhead. Here it's Buffalo 3, San Francisco nothing. The Bills on a 23-yard field goal by Scott Norwood. This is Dick Enberg. The Bill Walsh, 104 left in the opening quarter. San Francisco has it after the kickoff following the Bills' field goal. Here's Roger Craig. And not much there for the former Nebraska star who has never missed a game in his seven seasons here in San Francisco. What an athlete and what a conditioned player he is. Well, he came uh, originally as a highly conditioned athlete, but he's taking on a process of preparing himself in the offseason that, uh, that would rival the, the great Olympic sprinters and the marathon runners, the combination. He's got all kind of people following him now. Jerry Rice, players from other teams. He's lost 10 pounds, and he's in tremendous physical condition. There he is again. Oh, you could hear the lick put on him by Timmy Cofield, number 90, and he still gets out to the 26. And one of those uh, that have followed in Craig's path conditioning uh, exercises, Barry Sanders, who's having such a tremendous rookie year in Detroit. Right, any number of guys are coming out now and getting in on it. It's, it's uh, an adventure in itself. The running they do in the hills uh, here, down the trails, the lifting, the regimen. And that's, as I said before, it's like a new wave of conditioning in athletes. And that's the end of the first period here at Candlestick Park with the Bills in front, 3 nothing. And we'll be in the Meadowlands, uh, Bill and I, for that game. And Buffalo hopes that it won't be uh, of importance. Marv Levy knows a win today. He's heard the score. Indianapolis defeating Miami a win today for his club and they've got the AFC East third down and two as we open the second quarter Roger Craig met at the line of scrimmage fights forward but he'll be short of the first down as Scott Radisick in on another defensive play what well, that Bill's defense is demonstrating itself today uh, they haven't had people together Bennett and Colin as an example it haven't been together since the second game of the year but there is talent there and today they're playing with force determination and it could be the difference just to think of being the world's champions to win your division I think that would be as much as they could ask for going into the playoffs yeah, what were they saying you got to beat the champion to be the champion it's just like boxing so they were that was their whole uh, battle cry during this week in Buffalo Barry Hilton to punt Mickey Sutton back for Buffalo inside the 35. Perfect spiral. Beautiful kick. Sutton all the way to the 23. And then out of bounds close to the 35-yard line. Let's check the other scores. Cincinnati looking for 100. Minnesota and Cleveland are in overtime. Green Bay has beaten Chicago. Indianapolis a big winner against the Dolphins. San Diego an upset at Kansas City. Pittsburgh wins, so does Detroit. Late games, 7-7, Jets at Anaheim, 3-all at Atlanta, the Skins and Falcons. And next Saturday, it'll be the New York Jets and Buffalo Bills, 12 o'clock, an early wake-up call for you on the West Coast, 9 o'clock for Costas and Simpson and the NFL Live gang. And then on Sunday, of course, we have a full schedule of games. One of those grudge games at Houston Cincinnati is like a grudge game. I'm sure that Sam White likes those 60 points. Thurman Thomas wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. They were unable to block Chet Brooks, the strong safety. Again, Jim Kelly's been critical of his offensive coordinator related to calling plays. And they start out, again, first and 10, running the football. Their real chance to win this game is to throw the ball effectively and get it down the field because the 49ers appear to be playing rather flat. They're shallow in the secondary. They don't have any substitutes. And they're receiving with Lofton catching that ball and Reed. That's where their chance is. Three wide receivers. Actually, it's Thomas out wide to the right. Oh, my, was Kelly knifed down on a vicious hit from Kevin Fagan. That's the third time Fagan has been in on the Buffalo quarterback. 
Fagan has been a force. Now, I can't say Fagan is that great. He's an outstanding player, a solid player, but he's penetrating far too easily from his right side. You'll see him come up the field in a line stunt and bang, right under underneath. So he bent outside, Haley came up inside, and they didn't pick up the stunt quickly enough, not physically enough. So Richter and Wolper, offensive linemen, are going to have to get it done. And Kinnebrew, you saw him make a dive, but he couldn't block him either. Third down and 20 for Kelly. Out of the gun. He goes long, long for Johnson. And it's batted away. Daryl Pollard defensively for San Francisco. And Buffalo will have to punt. Johnson was open all of the way up the field. You'll see him. Pollard well inside. The ball gets there too late. Kelly threw a good ball, but he gave Pollard just enough chance to get back. But all the way up the field, he was wide open. It happened once before earlier when we talked about Harmon being open. By the nature of the defense, they've let people get open along the sideline. John Taylor, fifth in the NFL this year. Still being used to return punts. Kids kick. Plenty of time for Taylor at the 30. And he steps out of bounds across the 35-yard line. Timeout, 12.33 remaining in the first half here at Candlestick. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, anywhere in the USA. Shane Conlon, number 58, on the sidelines. Uh, we have not gotten official word on what his injury might be. Well, he's standing up, Dick. That's a good sign. He hasn't had a good year at all because he hasn't been able to play. Here's one of the fine young players in the game, seeing such limited action all year, and then playing, being hampered with injuries. It just isn't his year. Taylor to the left, Rice in motion from the right side as Young on first down. Plenty of time goes to Rice, and he is to the 45-yard line. It'll be second and one. We welcome those of you who have seen Cincinnati kick a field goal late in the game to make it 61 to 7 as uh, Sam Weish punishes Jerry Glanville's Oilers. Here it's 3 nothing Buffalo on a short field goal 23 yards by Scott Norwood. We're at the 12 minute mark second quarter. Steve Young starting for Joe Montana Montana resting those injured ribs and it's second and one at the San Francisco 45. Roger Craig has the first down and more to the 49 of Buffalo. Well, Walt Corey, the defensive coordinator, talked about moving Bruce Smith around two plays ago. He was out in the flat covering the back, and in the first quarter, we saw him leaving the line of scrimmage and making a play downfield. So uh, I suppose they're trying to get as much mileage out of him as they can, but having him cover receivers coming out of the backfield, I think that's another story. And moving around too, Dick, in a sense it's good because different kind of people have different people have to block him. But on the other hand, the defense has to change dramatically. Now he's lined up right over the ball. And Craig is hit immediately by Leon Seals, the third-year defensive end from Jackson State. So what uh, Walt Corey has done with the defense is isolate it and make uh, Smith the center point totally. Now, in this case, you'll see the ball snap, and Smith will come around all the way around the play. Here's an initial shot, but here's Smith coming right into the ball again. So they're counting on him making a lot of things happen, not only make tackles, cover people, but to break up the blocking combinations the 49ers are trying to use. Well, Smith is like a baseball home run hitter that's hitting in a lineup with no support around him, and you pitch around him and without Bennett in there. It's a lot tougher on him. Almost intercepted by Nate Odoms, who reached in on Jerry Rice. Without Cornelius Bennett on the other side, Smith is getting double and triple team frustrating for him so they're trying to move him around find a hole. Well here's Odom that famous uh, sort of a squatting position he takes comes up underneath the ball thrown just behind Jerry Rice. Now here's all the all the demonstrating that the Buffalo is famous for and in a sense I think it's distracted the players from the moment itself all the demonstrating they attempt to do and it doesn't show up on the scoreboard. How did you uh, temper that when you were here in San Francisco? We'll get your answer after this play. With Craig in motion. Young. Wide open is Jerry Rice. 30. 
20 and out of bounds. Finally pushed out by Leonard Smith. Jerry Rice didn't have a white jersey within 10 yards of him when he caught the ball. You would think with this being the premier receiver in football, they would concentrate on this. The 49ers are famous for bringing receivers across their formation. You'll see Jerry Rice wait. Now he comes across the field. His receiver way uh, right here in number 47 is so far behind him, uh, Kirby Jackson, that he can't come close. In fact, he even gives up. So what they're doing is sort of picking people off, letting Jerry get across the field. In that case, Jackson, number 47, waited too long before he identified what was happening to him. 29 yards and a first down at the 20. Craig. Boy, oh, that high knee lift and eight tough yards for Craig. I think we have a holding penalty down the field. Craig is such a punishing runner. He just bounces off of people, spins and holding. 62 offense. Still first down. Guy McIntyre ticketed 10 yards on the hold. Guy McIntyre right here up the field. You see his arm on the outside right there. Now he's holding and pulling down. That's not uncommon in football. They can call that all too often with people on the run, run blocking, reaching out and holding just for an instant. McIntyre is one of those quick, sneaky kind of players, explosive. From the 30, fake to Craig. Uh-oh. Young directing traffic. <laughs> Something's going to happen here pretty soon. He's going to run it or throw it. Now he's going to run it. No, now he's going to throw it. Now he throws long into the end zone. Inters almost intercepted by Ray Bentley. <laughs> I'm sure that's not what George Seifers wants. <laughs> Gee. There's a flag down. Somebody must have been downfield blocking, or maybe there was a hold. Young says it's against them. There's Rice wide open, back and forth. People trying to stay with him. Now they catch up to him again. It looked like Steve could have just run the ball. That would have solved everything. Yeah, he, there was a point there where he had a sure 10 or 15. Johnny Greer is the referee. Face mask, defense, still first down. Out of all of that, Marv Levy says, we get a first down five-yard penalty. Well, I'm sure that's not the discipline that uh, George Seifert wants out of his quarterback, but Steve has got this great instinct to move and run. He's probably is, is one of the outstanding players in recent times at quarterback that can move like that. Now he uh, was talking with us yesterday about Montana and what he's learned from Montana is his, his calmness, the fact that Joe never seems to get excited. He said, because of my days in the USFL and with Tampa Bay, I had to use my mobility to try to make a big play every play. And I've learned that all you have to do is follow Montana's lead, orchestrate the offense. A lot of people to get the ball to, just orchestrate the offense. Steve's always been a hyper type athlete. We had a shot of a Meister on the sidelines. And Roger Craig knocked out of bounds at the 22-yard line. You almost had to condition Steve Young to play a disciplined football. Uh, he played some of that at, at BYU, but since that time, he hasn't been, I, I'll be honest with you, that well coached in quarterback techniques, and he's been a hyper kind of an athlete anyway, one that's uh, explosive and, and uh, spontaneous, and it's taken time to slow him down and give him the, the uh, mechanics and the patience to play the game as the 49ers conceive of the game. Face mask did not uh, give the 49ers the first down. Four yards for Craig, so it's second and 11. Three nothing, Buffalo leads. Nine and a half left in the second quarter. Young runs right into Shane Conlon, and down he goes with a big loss. Oh, Tally it is, Daryl Tally. The man Tally. that the coaches are so right, excited about. He came about. off that left side. And uh, he just unindated the defense. It was a play pass. Tally comes off, tackles opening up to him. Really, it's, it's Rathman trying to pick him up. And Young gives a little ground, which allows Tally to come out around and make the play. If Young had stepped forward, he'd have been all right. But Tally's one of the real undersung players on this team. I've always felt for many years he's one of the really solid top linebackers in the league. 
Brother Jackson plays tight end in Philadelphia. Tally says, I'd have been a terrific Raider. I like the way they used to beat up on people. Young, and that could be a flag. There it is. Odom's trying to stop Rice, grabbed him too soon. Well, Odom's had come underneath that pass. They've tried it three times now. Underneath that pass to make his play twice. This time. <laughs> pass interference. 37 defense. First down. Well, they get a first down on the short pass at well, the Odom's, one. This time, Dick, let Rice get too far underneath him. Now he has to make a desperation move to make the play. Yeah, no doubt about that one. So early on, Taylor caught one. Then Odom's brought, broke it up. And now Rice tries it. Odom lets, lets him get just a step too far before he jumps to it. And he can't, he can't do it without tackling Rice. How is it that the 49ers had game underneath to the wide receiver is so much more effective than everyone else? Oh, down goes Young, and there's no fumble. Oh, that'll be uh, worthy of review. Bruce Smith came up with the ball. And it appeared that that uh, ball was loose as he was hit by Smith and Radisson. Well, Steve Wallace gets in real trouble, number 74. Now it's McIntyre. So uh, Smith split both of them, but neither one got their body between Smith and the quarterback. He's and there he is again. That ball was loose. That's a clear fumble. And Bruce Smith recovers. Let's see if on the review they give it, unless they say the whistle was dead. He must have. Now they're going to review. Smith is really a force in this game. Now he's he's making it very difficult for McIntyre. Here's another look at it. He's there. He's got the ball. He's on his way down. I can't believe that would be in the grasp that quickly. And have to be a fumble. Yeah. But Smith's making it real tough for Guy McIntyre. McIntyre's a small, smallish guard at 265. And Smith's too much for him at this point. Number one player picked in the draft of 85, Bruce Smith. And if you look at McIntyre. McIntyre's a smallish guard with is explosive and quick, but pass protection isn't his strength. And he's had problems with a great player like Smith. And Young being left-handed Dick's a real problem in this game. Montana facing the other way and avoiding the other way would have had an easier time dealing with a Smith. But Young is looking right down the barrel of Smith coming at him. He's being left-handed. Young, who has said openly that he just hates being a backup. He says, I'm a lousy backup. I hate the word. It drives me crazy. After further review, the play stands. What? With the 45-second clock operator, Please reset the clock. How in the world could they on a review that. could they not call out a fumble? It was a fumble to everyone who saw it all around. I'm sure every viewer in the country could see that one. That just stuns me that that was not reversed. There was uh, the evidence seemed more than uh, obvious. But on we go. Second down at the 39. Rice in motion. Here's Rice across the field again. And incomplete. Good coverage by Buffalo. They had Rice pinned in. And Smurless was pressuring Young. Let's see what Bruce Smith did on the play. Now he's right up over the ball. And he's running a line stunt. Letting both defensive ends come inside. Then he's going to scrape to the outside. He is tough to deal with. Now, of course, the ball should have been thrown some time before that. But that time, they waited for Rice to come across the field. And that really made the difference. Uh, Bentley was sitting there watching Rice, so Steve Young wanted to throw in the ball. Nowhere to go with it. Leading again this year, ten and a half sacks is Bruce Smith's total. Third down and 18 underneath the Raffman, and he could not one-hand it. Leon Seals drifting off his uh, defensive line position there to make it tough on Raffman, so the 49ers who had driven to the 20 and then a series of penalties both ways lucky to keep the ball in fact and now we'll have to punt it. Well there's some great talent in this Bills defense people have known it for some time they had a great season last year spotty this year because of injuries but the talent is there if they can ever get them back together. Barry Helton punches his uh, punt to Mickey Sutton who lets it roll. 
He made the right choice into the end zone. Touchback Buffalo. Timeout. 740 left in the opening half here in San Francisco. And a look at the scores from Candlestick Park where Buffalo leads San Francisco 3-0. Cincinnati, Minnesota, Cleveland still in overtime. If Cleveland wins and can beat Houston next week, Cleveland will salvage the AFC Central. They'll win it. Indianapolis helping Buffalo. San Diego spoiling Kansas City's dreams. Pittsburgh a winner in Detroit as well. Late games are tied. Jets, Rams, and Washington, Atlanta. Here, Buffalo, 3-0 lead, 740 remaining first half. Jim Kelly to Thurman Thomas. And Bill Romanowski and Matt Millen get Thomas down after a gain of about three or four. Those are the toughest of plays. Buffalo has reached blocking down the line of scrimmage, handing the ball off, stretching it, but the 49er defense is just going to go down the line of scrimmage with it. You see Fagan, Haley coming down the line of scrimmage, all of them waiting for the ball, all of them sitting over there waiting for a ball that hasn't gotten there yet. Now, finally, Thomas sees it all and cuts back for a couple of yards, but those are the toughest kind of plays to run against this kind of a talented defense. Hit right at the line of scrimmage. Kevin Fagan again. Fagan has taken Wolford apart. He came underneath everybody and made the play. Tremendous play. And these are the kind of things that are tough. You see Millen stepping in, but Fagan coming underneath this thing, unblocked, right there. And Wolford, who's a fine tackle, a big, powerful man, but Fagan's explosion up underneath him just stalled him, just sort of stoned him in the spot, and he came right off the block. Third and five, Buffalo. Buffalo just has to throw the ball. That's all there is to it. It's a sweep. Thomas knocked down at the 29. He's a yard short of a first down. Pierce Holt and Michael Walter get him. Pierce Holt in his second year from Angelo State. He was drafted as a 26-year-old rookie. Quite a story. He was out of college football for three, four years. He had a variety of jobs from car salesman to farm construction, mortgage inspector, newspaper morning route, and uh, finally decided to go to Angelo State, a Division II school where he still had four years eligibility. If he had gone to Houston where he was intended to attend uh, originally, he only would have allowed one year eligibility. Taylor at the 36. And to the 47 yard line so San Francisco has the ball near midfield with 528 left in the opening half the Rocky Mountain legend by Magnavox smart choices for smart people Magnavox smart very smart and by Mazda cars and trucks Mazda it just feels right a jacket and sweater afternoon here in San Francisco, around 60 degrees, three nothing Buffalo. Not much offense. Young takes over at his own 47, and Craig gets a block on the corner and invades Buffalo territory. A run of about nine before Bray Bentley can chase him down. Well, passing the ball is right up Buffalo's alley defensively because they've got the great pass rushers, especially Bruce Smith. But now running. Buffalo defense historically has not been that disciplined and there are things you can do to it. And that was a beautiful job of blocking especially Rathman coming off the weak side. They mark the ball at the 45 of Buffalo second and two. Mike Wilson to the right. Jerry Rice split left. Brent Jones and Jamie Williams book in the line the two tight ends. Craig again. Same play. And a flag is down as Craig goes to the 33-yard line. This Same one may kind come of play, back. Dick. Same kind of play where they start up, bend out, but I guess we've got holding. George Seifert, who grew up in San Francisco, so this is his city, and now he has the 49ers he used to usher at Kezar Stadium. Holding, 66 offense, second down. Back in the late 50s, and Y.A. Tittle, he said, I still can't figure out why the 49ers traded <laughs> Tittle. <laughs> well, he's it. The 
you see Tausch, Terry Tausch, blocking right here. Now he's holding, now he cuts down. I really didn't see much holding on his part at that point. He must have caught it earlier because the end of the block, he, he hit his man and cut him down. Second and 12 for Young. Frank, another big hole. And he's to the Buffalo 47-yard line. Well, let's check on that overtime game in Cleveland. Let's go to NFL Live in New York. Dick, here it is. Browns line up for what could be a winning field goal with five and a half minutes to play in overtime. It would be from 24 yards, but on third down, with another chance left, if it fails, they go for the fake. And Mike Pagel throws to linebacker Van Waiters for a 14-yard touchdown. The Browns are off the skids. They win at home 23-17 in OT. Richard? All right, Bob, and a big, big win for Cleveland because now it boils down to their contest at Houston next weekend, and a Cleveland win gives them the Central Division title. Timeout San Francisco, 334 left, and a shutout half for the 49ers. Now we're going to have a chance to look at the cut blocking as employed by the 49ers. This goes all the way back to Paul Brown many years ago. See these cut blocks here by Sapolo here, and then right here by Tausch low here. Paul's felt that getting people off their feet was the way you play football. Wide open is Keith Henderson. Henderson could go all the way, and he's to the eight-yard line before Leonard Smith can catch him from behind. So we saw cut blocking. Now we see a pattern in which a receiver's totally uncovered coming out of the backfield. Again, a blown coverage, in a sense, by the uh, Buffalo team. And they just didn't cover this. Twice now, the big receiver, the key receiver, is not covered coming up the field. There's, there he is right here in the middle coming out of the backfield. Now it's a matter of splitting defenders, running up the field, and trying to get going at full stride. The key is just try to stay between all of the defenders, not take any one of them on. 40 yards for Henderson. He's caught two passes this year, one for 78, one for 40. First and goal as the Niners try to overcome a 3-0 deficit. Roger Craig to the four. Mark Kelso, Nate Odom's in on the stop of Craig. The 49ers may have solved the riddle, in a sense, of trying to deal with the pass rushers and getting the ball off quickly. And then these counter plays and plays breaking outside, they seem to be separating uh, Bill defenders. Again, you always wonder about the Bills' defense being disciplined enough to deal with these kind of plays. Approaching the two-minute timeout, doesn't appear the 49ers uh, are eager to get a play off. And so there's the timeout signal. 3-0, Marv Levy's Buffalo Bills lead, but that lead in danger. Boy, for a while it appeared that Shanahan was going to make more stops than the Chattanooga Choo Choo. The Greyhound bus. <laughs> L.A. to Denver to Lexington, Kentucky, but he's turned down the job. Bobby Bethard says that he's going to stay in Denver. He'll be the head coach when Reeves retires, and uh, Alabama junior Keith McCants, many feel the top defensive player in collegiate ball, will come out as a junior. NFL Live will have that and more scores and highlights, so stay with us. It's second and goal. San Francisco at the four. Roger Craig slamming down to about the one and a half. Nate Odom's down low to make the tackle. Well, let's see. Dan Reeves retires. How long do you think Shanahan would have to wait before he uh, becomes the head man? There? He may be getting Social Security for this <laughs> by the time he takes I that I think job. Reeves is going to hang around a while. Yeah, I'd, I'd say five, well, ten years. Reeves is like only he's, 45. He's a young man, and he thoroughly thrives on the game. He's at the top of his game. And uh, I, don't, I don't think Mike Shanahan's going to wait for that. But he might be waiting for an NFL job. And maybe there's some people that are inquiring about that. So he thought he should wait. At the one-yard line, third and goal. San Francisco to Craig. Does he get in? No. Stop right on the doorstep by the Bills on that defensive right side. So it'll be fourth and goal from just inches away. George Seifert, Joe Montana. Montana, it's not that he doesn't want to see. This team can afford to look. That's the signal. What does it mean? Just a signal. I assume it's going to be Roger Craig over the top. Right up the middle, he went to the midsection. Uh, I think it's Roger Craig, and uh, we'll see from this formation. Uh, I think Roger Craig's going to counter and then run to his left side. Counter step. 
Craig, the right halfback. No, it's a quarterback. And does he get in? No, they're marking it outside the goal line. Quarterback sneaks as tough a play to score with on the goal line as there is because you can't see him score part of the time. There's so many people in there that you can't find the ball. First down, Buffalo. And that is a defensive stand that'll bring some cheers from the state of New York as Levy's defense denies the Super Bowl champions inside the 10. That was really critical looking at the time on the clock because the 49ers aren't going to get the ball back even if they get good field position. Walt Corey last night, the defensive coordinator, says, you know what? I've been telling my team we can shut out San Francisco. And then he looked at us with a wry smile and says, I know I sound crazy. <laughs> well, he says, he, I think we can do it. He's halfway there, it looks like. So that ball tickling the goal line. Buffalo takes over with 41 seconds left in the half. Now Kelly, best be careful. He spreads his offense, and now they're having trouble hearing. Uh-oh, Kelly looked as if that was intended for Kinnebrew, and Larry Kinnebrew ran right by him, and Kelly then holds on, gets out to the five. If this were a, a game dependent on winning for division places or playoffs, I'm sure uh, George Seifert would have kicked a field goal, but in this situation, uh, not quite as much to lose. He went ahead with it. Kelly last time had a lot of room on either side to run a quarterback sneak, which would make sense in this situation. Well, he won't have to even make a decision. The clock will winding down the final seconds of this first half, and the Buffalo Bills on a 23-yard field goal by Scott Norwood. That's all the scoring in the first 30 at Candlestick. full of simple pleasures like the comfort of Levi's jeans or a hedge forgotten now the Buffalo Bills with only three points scored in this first half but a marvelous goal line stand as they stop San Francisco four shots from the eight yard line now that's the story at the intermission here at Candlestick Park. Stay tuned for all the scores and highlights after these words from your local station. Of the Midwest and East, not in this 60-degree, uh, uh, partly cloudy skies of San Francisco, but Buffalo has the lead on a short field goal. And the key, of course, to the half was the goal line stand. Well, the goal line stand was uh, the big factor with that time remaining. The 49ers weren't going to get field position again. But Young tried a quarterback sneak. Really tough to attempt at that point on the field. Now, as the ball snapped, you'll see him slip with his right foot, but then it would still have been trouble going over the top because he had Tally sitting in there, Smith sitting in there, nowhere to go with the ball. You were surprised by the quarterback sneak call. You're not real fond of it anyway on the goal line, are well, you? Well, often you'll score on the goal line with a quarterback sneak, but by the time the officials get there, you've been pushed back and they can't see the score occur. So it's a tough call down there. Well, so much going on. The scores, the highlights, the playoff picture to bring you right up to date. We go to NFL Live in New York and Bob Costas. Okay, Bob Costas back with O.J. Simpson. A lot of wheel spinning today, some surprising results, but we don't know how much has been clarified in terms of the playoff picture at this point. Well, at this point, Bob, absolutely nothing has been clarified because if Buffalo goes on and lose to the San Francisco 49ers and if the Raiders lose to Seattle, hey, we'll end the day just how we started today. Everybody is still in it. No one in the AFC has been eliminated. All right, let's take a quick run through all the scores. In the game you're watching, the Bills at Candlestick. Steve Young, a quarterback, not Joe Montana, and the Bills, who have been floundering of late, leading 3 nothing at halftime. The Rams are pouring it on the Jets. Greg Bell with a pair of short scoring runs. Jim Everett has thrown two touchdown passes, including a 43-yarder to Flipper Anderson. Tony Eason, a quarterback today for the Jets, with a 63-yard scoring strike to JoJo Townsell. But the Rams lead 28-7 late in the second quarter. Atlanta just added another touchdown. They go up 27-10 at 
home against the Redskins. Chris Miller has thrown two touchdown passes to Michael Haynes. One of them covers 72 yards. Mark Rippon starts for the Redskins, leaves with a sprained neck. Doug Williams comes in, hits Art Monk for a 34-yard touchdown, but the Redskins at this point trail by 17. Now these are finals from earlier today. Don't adjust the set. Cincinnati 61, Houston 7. It was 45 to nothing when the Bengals tried, that's right, an onside kick. A little early Christmas present from Sam Weish to his buddy Jerry Glanville, who earlier in the week had said, Weish is no hero of mine. Here's Ira Hillary recovering it. Big day for Boomer Esiason. Adding them up, Esiason throws for four touchdowns before he gives way to Eric Wilhelm, who throws a 10-yarder to Ira Hillary. Almost 600 yards in total offense today for Cincinnati. Huge day for David Fulcher. Three interceptions and a fumble recovery. Cleveland wins at overtime. We showed you the play a uh, short time ago. They went with the fake field goal on third down. Mike Pagel threw 14 yards to Van Waiters for the winner. 23-17 over Minnesota. The fourth overtime game played this year by the Cleveland Browns and their first win. They had two losses and a tie prior to this. They prevail by six. Let's take a look at the standings now. In the AFC Central, everybody has a winning record. Everybody is still alive for the playoffs, not necessarily for the division title, but everybody is still alive for at least a wild card in the AFC Central. Green Bay wins at Chicago, and the Packers forge a tie with Minnesota now atop the NFC Central. Good day for Don McCaskey. He throws for a touchdown. He runs for a couple. Neil Anderson, a big day in defeat today for the Bears. He rushed for a 119 yards and he caught two touchdown passes from Jim Harbaugh but the Bears now fall to six and nine they've lost five in a row and nine of their last 11 after a 4-0 start they lose 40 to 28. Indianapolis deals Don Shula's playoff hopes a serious blow with a 42 to 13 win behind the performance of Jack Trudeau at the Hoosier Dome. Trudeau threw for four touchdowns today this is one of them to James Pruitt, the former Dolphin, it covers five yards. These are the standings in the AFC East with Buffalo holding the 3-0 lead at halftime out in San Francisco. And as you see, New England and the Jets are history in terms of the playoffs. The others still have at least slim hopes. Eric Dickerson with a good day today. 107 yards rushing for Indianapolis, including two rushing touchdowns, and he caught a career-high nine passes. San Diego beat Kansas City in Kansas City 20-13. to How do you figure this? The Chargers beat Kansas City head-to-head Twice this year, they scored 20 unanswered points after falling behind 13 to nothing. Pittsburgh's still alive for the playoffs after that horrendous start when they were the laughing stock of the league. They're now 8-7. and seven. They win 28-10 at home over New England. Lewis Lips had a 58-yard scoring run on an end-around reverse. And Detroit has now won four in a row and five out of six. It was a big day for Barry Sanders, better than 100 yards and a touchdown as they win at home over Tampa Bay, 33-7. To seven, and we'll continue following these messages from your local stations. Tis the season to be jolly. We're at halftime. You never know where you're going to run into Santa Claus, and you know that there are auditions going on tonight. That you're not coaching him. Let me just give, give me a little ho ho ho. I want to see. Oh, ho 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 ho. Well, I don't know. That's pretty that, good. Was, you want to see a real Santa Claus? This is a real, a real Santa, Santa Claus. Claus. The 49er party yesterday. The real guy, St. Nick, was there. Let's take a look. Oh, 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 come to me, my children. Merry Christmas to you. Oh, this is so wonderful. Merry Christmas. I hope you have some wonderful toys coming to you. Now you, Mr. Block, you don't get any toy. You drop the pass. You get no toy, my son. But the children, they get toys. Yeah. This is wonderful. Yes, I shall do this each year. You know, I set Santa Claus in back 20 years with that one. That's right. That's it. And Rathbun's little daughter. You know, to really be Santa Claus, you need one of these. Oh, there oh, you go. That's my Merry, present. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Second half gets underway, and Terrence Flankler returns the kickoff to the 26-yard line. The Coors halftime statistics look this way. 52 yards to 50 in rushing, the Niners, and 71 to 67, the advantage to Buffalo in passing. So only two yards separate them. That's about how the half went. The 49ers had their chance and were stopped on the goal line by Buffalo, and Buffalo's opportunity resulted in a 23-yard field goal. Time of possession even 10 seconds apart. So evenly played first half. Buffalo battling for 
A win that would assure them the AFC Eastern title. San Francisco playing for its Super Bowl pride. Let the world know that uh, even with everything clinched, everything sewn up, that they still can beat a solid team. Roger Craig to the 31-yard line. Bruce Smith, number 78, makes another tackle for Buffalo. Well, we, we've seen uh, the 49ers run the same kind of play about five times in a row. Again, they're going to stretch out. Smith cut down from behind, but here he comes to make the play all the way across the field. But you saw the room that Roger Craig had before Smith got there. Without Smith, Craig is gone. So the 49ers are starting in the line of scrimmage, then bending back outside the offensive tackles and catching all the Bills inside. Craig, the only 49er with rushing yardage, has 56 in the game. He's going for 1,000 on the year. Young dumps it off incomplete to Rathman. Scott Radisick was there, number 97 for Buffalo. Well, maybe the 49ers need to get this game out of their system and be revitalized for the playoffs. If you'll remember, Dick, in 1987, we were 13 and 2 in the class of the league and odds on favorites, and then we're upset in the playoffs. And so that was the Minnesota that, game here. Right. A loss at this point in the season, believe it or not, wouldn't be the worst thing that could happen to the 49ers. Now, on the other side, uh, the Bills could really make their year, could be right back where they were a year ago by winning today. He's met by Leon Seals. Joe Montana with a rib injury, and it requires uh, several different shots in the chest uh, painkillers for him to play. And the doctors felt it just was not wise for Montana to continue to give him a week off. Hope that he might be able to finish out the regular season next week. So Steve Young, who is starting for the third time this year, gets, gets the call. And... Uh, Unable to move the ball in the first possession here in the second half. Helton to punt for the fourth time. You know, Dick, as, as this evolution occurs between Montana and Young, it won't be that Joe Montana can't play great football, but he won't be able to play as often. And that's where Young comes in. Bad kick, Helton off the side of his foot. And that ball goes out of bounds around the 40 of San Francisco. Now they're going to mark it the 45. Helton almost missed it completely off the side of the foot. 16 yards. I don't know if he's had many bad ones this year. He's a much improved player. And this ball just caught on the side of his foot. He just wasn't quite at his best. The concentration level is vital for a game like this for the 49ers or any team that have these playoffs locked in. But again, they have to retain that, that uh, standard of play has to be way up there. But it's only human to relax, and uh, apparently that's what we're seeing from the San Francisco team today. Kelly. Fagan can't get him, and Kelly hits Andre Reed on the sidelines at the 42. But Fagan again, who has been harassing Kelly all day. Fagan is a powerful squat type athlete that's really tough to handle physically. You see right here, he just moves across Wolford's face and goes to the play. And he's a relentless player, just relentless. Be between him and Pierce Holt, you've got two of the best bookend, squat, powerful defensive ends in the league that are good against the run, but outstanding against the pass. Second down and three for Kelly. Give to Kennebrew. Wrapped up in the backfield by Charles Haley. Haley, the man you saw so rudely dismissed on Monday night on what was a highly controversial call and then penalty that uh, resulted in his disqualification. He has nine and a half sacks this year. Leads the Niners with three forced fumbles. It's one of those, those special athletes that are in the league today. They're combination defensive lineman and linebacker. Uh, certainly from the Taylor mold. Uh, the Harris mold from Green Bay. These are men that are big, active, excellent pass rushers, good linebackers. They're the ones that are dominating the game today. Third down and four. Don Beebe, the rookie with lots of speed, is out to the right. And they throw underneath incomplete to Ronnie Harmon, who was sandwiched by Romanowski and Michael Walter. It's a tough throw. Kelly had to put it right between two defenders that were straddling the receiver. And that was his only option. He was looking at that the whole time. He couldn't have gone anywhere else. 
John Kidd comes in to punt. Former member of a Ohio hockey state champion. And uh, he'll try to stick one down inside the 10 yard line. It is going to be down at the one. Steve Tasker, number 89, who was Kidd's teammate at Northwestern, there to get the high mount. A perfectly placed kick by Kidd, and the Niners start in the hole. NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by Budweiser, Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By GMAC, the financial services people from General Motors. And by the new generation of Oldsmobile. Step into the future now at your Oldsmobile dealer. 49ers take over at the one-yard line. This is where they're dangerous if you watch them on Monday night. John Taylor land. First and 99 for Young. Instead, it's Craig who has carried the running load, getting only a yard. And there's Smith again to make the stop for Buffalo. Again, Smith over the center and then stunning around an adjacent, an adjacent lineman of his to get to the ball. He's almost like a linebacker playing in there. You see him come up and then come right around to make the stop. And uh, in this case, Chuck Thomas playing center just can't stay with the man. So he is actually dominating this game in a sense as, about as well as you, as you can do as a defensive lineman. Chuck Thomas uh, slow getting up, in fact, as you saw John Taylor come in on second down and 10. Taylor was an outstanding high school baseball player. He grew up about 15 uh, minutes from Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. Grew up in New Jersey. Said he was a second baseman and a center fielder and uh, leadoff hitter. He said, I knew I could always go and get the ball as a center fielder. And I figured, hey, football is about four times as big as a baseball. <laughs> I've been playing defense in high school. I want to play wide receiver. And at Delaware State, that's where he learned the trade. Yeah, uh, that's what we that's where we looked at him uh, Dick uh, he didn't catch that many balls he only caught about third caught about 30 balls his senior year but he made some sensational catches leaping way into the air and his leaping ability and his at great athletic prowess is what really attracted us because he didn't have the disciplines that a lot of receivers have had it was sort of a primitive style of football they played but believe me great athletic ability I talked with him yesterday and of course his brother Keith plays for Indianapolis has seven interceptions and he said that uh, when he ran those two touchdowns, he thought about his mom who passed away last 4th of July. He said, I, I somehow had the feeling that she was enjoying that with me. Will Young go to... No, he goes underneath to Craig on the pass. And Roger Craig with one of those patented runs and a first down. Just denying, defying tacklers on his way. Ray Bentley finally got him to the ground. Well, the Bills were waiting for that famous slant pass the 49ers throw. They doubled up on both those wide receivers. Young couldn't throw it. Then at the last second, he just dropped it off to Craig, who, what'd he do? He broke three tackles to get nine yards. That's the kind of player he is. His 482nd reception. He's only 10 away from Walter Payton. Most catches by a running back in NFL history. It appears he'll own that record. Greg on the ground and a good tackle by the author Ray Bentley from Central Michigan. He considers himself a author first that happens to be playing football and his main character is Darby the Dinosaur. This one is just a release nap time for Darby and KV blanket. I know I don't go anywhere without a KV blanket and a big kiss. I mean, that's, you can't hardly sleep on the road without those two items. Mike Camby, a former defensive lineman with Buffalo, does the illustration, so that's an interesting collaboration. Young can't get it to Rathen, and was he open, but the reason Young couldn't complete the pass, Daryl Talley had come in on a shot from that right side linebacker position. Well, they were looking for that. That's what we call quarterback sweep backs away. You know, you'll see Young come out with his lineman and everyone pulling to the right, but Talley was right on top of it. He came right to Young. He wasn't worried about anything else. To be honest with you, I think the 49ers have gone to that a little too often, and they're going to need it later, but now people are just zeroing in on that play. 
Keith Henderson, number 30, comes into the backfield. He's a man who's got that 40-yard pass that set up what appeared to be a 49er score, only to be denied on the brilliant goal line stand late in the first half. 3 nothing Buffalo. Third and eight. Young in trouble. Completes it to Raffman. Gets a block from Wilson. First down, 46-yard line. You saw Walt Corey, the defensive coordinator, his team played perfect defense. Here's Young being forced to the outside on the verge of being tackled. He's got all kinds of people chasing him down, nowhere to go, then just flips it off. Watch this catch. Now, Rathman knows just where to go with the ball. He only runs straight up the field, and he just takes people right back with him. Again, that spontaneous play that Young has, that Montana has, marked the 49ers is really a different kind of football team. Give this to Craig. And Craig is to the Buffalo 47-yard line. Back to the Rathman catch. He told us at Nebraska, he said, I think I caught in four years five screen passes. He said, I didn't know that you could catch the ball as well as run with it. And uh, he said, Sherm Lewis, who was his coach in his uh, rookie year, and Roger Craig were the two men who helped him most in learning how to be patient, watch the ball in, not try to run too soon. He's become a solid receiver. Well, that's a skill that they've emphasized in San Francisco over the years, and they've taken backs like uh, Rathman, and, and even Craig only caught a two or three passes his senior year, and to develop that skill. But one thing for sure, they came to the team with good hands so you could develop it. Roger Craig, who also has talented feet, and he's able to push to the Buffalo 43 on the first down San Francisco with 8.24 left in the third quarter. Buffalo leads 3-0. Well, Buffalo's playing hard football and intense football, and so far it's been a spontaneous play of Young that's made the difference. Uh, and when I say the difference, really, Buffalo is out hitting the 49ers to an extent. But it's that savvy that Young has that, uh, as I've said before, Montana has it, and Rathman have it, and this kind of play, they can come up with something when they absolutely need it. Roger Craig spinning to the 39-yard line. Bentley and Radisic make the tackle. Seifert, uh, in our chat with him yesterday, said that uh, he wants to work on his running game. Looking ahead to the playoffs, he's not totally pleased with the way San Francisco has moved on the ground. Many folks feel that Roger Craig isn't quite the back that he was in the last two or three years, but he's going to get his thousand yards again. In fact, he's close to it today. Well, I wouldn't relate the running game to Craig. Craig's as good as he's ever been or maybe better. I would say the offensive line part of it may not have been as effective. Plus that, their forward passing's been so good, they're throwing when often in the past they've run with the ball. Craig inside the 35. That'll be shy a couple of yards of a first down. Kirby Jackson slanting in from a corner to make the tackle, along with uh, Leon Seals. Dick, there was a great block, a fine block by Jamie Williams, a plan B player from the Houston Oilers that's just beginning to play his first football for the 49ers. At tight end that time, he took his linebacker straight off the line of scrimmage, and that allowed that, that push that side of the line off and they've got their added yardage. Jamie Williams, he grew up in Davenport, Iowa, and went to the same high school, played on the same team with Roger Craig. How's that for starters? Then they went, uh, both matriculated at Nebraska where they were roommates, Craig and Jamie Williams. Timeout called by San Francisco. 6.29 remaining in the third quarter. Buffalo hanging tenaciously to a 3-0 advantage. And Bill Walsh and I will be at the Meadowlands on Christmas weekend. The Bills hope uh, all will be resolved with a victory today here in San Francisco. Should they lose, however, then that becomes a very big game to close out the year for Bills fans. Roger Craig, three yards away from 1,000, goes in motion. Young downfield into a crowd, and it's intercepted by Mark Kelso, his second of the game. And Cornelius Bennett has been quite a cheerleader on the sidelines for the Bills. Well, Young wanted to roll left, and he was cut off. The Bills penetrated so far, he had to stop, 
And then he had to throw it all the way back across the field. Because he wants to go to the left, and then he's forced back. Uh, again, Kelso makes it the second interception, which is really critical. Now, you're going to have Roger Craig going down to the corner with a release here. Young wants to come around and roll, but he's cut off. And consequently, he goes and he has to cut back. And then the, you'll see this. Now he bends back. Now he throws a little bit late with two defender on, defenders on his man. The reason he threw late, he was forced to take his eye off the receiver by that penetration. That cost him the interception. So the Bills take over at their 10-yard line, still enjoying the 3-0 lead. Kelly on a bootleg. Dumps it off to Thomas. Oh, look at those quick feet. He's at the 20. And he's out of bounds at the 30, a 20-yard gain. Blocked by Pete Metzler has helped out. Well, that shows Thomas great quick feet that he moved, we moved because he had Chet Brooks there to tackle him, one of the surest tacklers on the 49er team. Again, Kelly now is in trouble. He has penetration cutting him off right there in the form of Fagan. He comes back and he gets rid of the ball. Now look, Brooks is in great position, but Thomas' feet, they're so quick and so nimble the coaches are really high on him. Not so much of his running ability, but his all-around, all-purpose play. Well, he the it. NFL in all-purpose yardage. Uh-oh. In trouble, and down he goes. Chet Brooks gets him this time after he embarrassed Brooks on the play before. He may have been pumped to make that tackle. I don't know where that play was headed. It looked as though they wanted to start left and bend all the way around and go right. But there was so much penetration across the line over there, it left Thomas nowhere to go. You'll see Thomas start. Now look, him come all the way around behind the guard, but Brooks has already penetrated. Nowhere to go. You don't know if they need those kind of plays. The Buffalo can throw the ball. They might as well throw it and get it over with. Second down and long for Kelly. Intercepted by Romanowski. And he is to the 23. Former Boston College star has his first interception of the year. And the 49ers are in business at the Bill 23. Romanowski just rode the tight end down the line of scrimmage and dropped. You'll see him ride the tight end, then just drop, and this pattern will run right into that throwing lane. Now Kelly looks to the right, then he wants to come back and throw left. Romanowski standing right in the way. Steve Young with Rathman and Craig behind him. Roger Craig again. And he's down to the 21-yard line. Radisic and Jackson, the tacklers. Well, Seifert is, uh, through Bob McKittrick, who basically runs their running game, Just you can, you can see them using assorted runs each time. And I'm sure it's to sharpen themselves for next week's game, but more importantly, for the playoff games. There's Romanowski. What an effervescent, young, enthusiastic player. He drives everyone else nuts in practice because he's so intense. He just doesn't know any way to go but full speed. Second and eight. Craig, with this run, he's over 1,000 on the year and a first down at the 12. Now Roger Craig has been brilliant in his seven years as a 49er. Uh, once again, over 1,000. He had 1,500 last year. They announce it to the crowd at Candlestick. Roger Craig, he is a player's player. Real tough to coach, too, I bet, huh, Bill? Oh, boy, just won't listen to a thing you say. <laughs> what a coachable guy. What a totally dedicated athlete. Rathman. Rathman to the two. Leonard Smith saved a touchdown. Human bowling ball of a man, Rathman. And they may have to measure for a first down. 
Rathman just bends again, starting forward, then bending back to the outside. You see him just split defenders to the outside. It looks as though Buffalo hasn't prepared for something starting into the line, then bending slightly to the outside, outside the offensive tackles. It is a first down. So the 49ers denied by Marv Levy's defense from the eight on a goal line stand, but they get four shots from just outside the one. And Young will call time. That is the second timeout used by San Francisco in this half. 2.59 left, third quarter. NBC Sports serves your need to know all week long. Dial 1-900-454-3500 for NBC Scores Plus. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, anywhere in the USA. Welcome back to Candlestick Park, to Kenberg with Bill Walsh. The 49ers have the longest existing streak of not being shut out, 192 straight games. They're blank so far today, 3-0, but they have four chances from a yard and a half. Roger Craig, he earned it. Touchdown, San Francisco. The 49ers used five different running plays on that drive each different each they're looking at for different things in that uh, concept but when it finally came down to it they just knocked the bills off the line of scrimmage and scored again it's going to be up to Jim Kelly now he's got a full quarter bring his team back a touchdown can win it for him it's going to be up to Jim to pull his team back he had seven great games a couple of bad ones now he's going to have to get it done Mike Cooper to add the extra point San Francisco, seven, Buffalo, three. Well, here's the ground level shot. The right side of the line will come off the ball well, knock people aside, and you'll see uh, the defense sort of being turned with just enough room to split it. And there's Marv Levy having to deal with it. The Romanowski interception to the 23, and four plays later, Buffalo trails. 49ers finally in front 7-3. The Rams are winning. Washington losing. If that continues in that manner, the Rams would clinch a wild card spot in the NFC. Cooper kicks it off. Ronnie Harmon from Iowa. Harmon with a flag down. Bolts all the way to the 40-yard line. Fumbles. And the 49ers have recovered. Antonio Goss. the penalty is against Buffalo which it appears to be at San Francisco's ball holding 84 is declined first down Keith McKellar guilty of the hold Ronnie Harmon had the ball belted away on the tackle and Antonio Goss the rookie from North Carolina Give San Francisco the pumpkin at the 47. Here it is. Well, here's Harmon making a super effort to try to get something done. He's fine. It looks like the ball comes out after he hits. That'll be interesting. I guess they're not going to look at it again. From but that angle. Here, let's hear a better angle. Let's see if he's down before he loses it. Can't tell. There goes the ball. Looks like that knee hit, then the ball came out. But they were right there. Yeah. Now they're going to replay it. They're reviewing it now. Looks as though that knee hit, Dick. It really does. It's hard to see the ball here. He's the, see, there's the knee is bounced. There's his hand, his arm. There the come, ball comes out after he hit the ground. And so Buffalo may come out of this with a ball after all. At the 40-yard line where he was hit. Ronnie Harmon is a fine athlete. We coached his brother, Derek. What a family. All very bright people. Derek was in aeronautics, worked at the Stanford uh, Research Institute here fine athlete and he's their their fine uh, four receiver type player in their shotgun the younger brother Kevin is up at Seattle running back with the Seahawks so they all played professional football Al Sabato an NFL headlinesman for 20 years as the instant replay official today worked a couple of Super Bowls and uh, 
when they didn't call the other one a fumble that puts a lot of doubt in my mind whether they can uh, what they're going to call here tough to reverse it when they didn't reverse what appeared to be an obvious right. fumble in the first half well his knee was definitely down from our angle well, maybe there's another angle that would would uh, tell us differently Armin, of course more than interested and watch there's after further review the play stands first down well, if nothing else, at least there was consistency. Both appeared to be fumbles, and both or one was, appeared to be a fumble. They ruled not a fumble, and this one didn't appear to be a fumble, and they ruled it a fumble. I guess that's consistently maybe inconsistent. Roger Craig, good blocking. That play was beautifully executed. Harris Barton pulling from right tackle, came all the way around the corner and took his man down. So they got what they really wanted with that play. They got the tackle in front of the ball carrier. Beautifully done job. And it looked as though both these people will pull, but Harris Barton, you'll see him come all the way around, will make a key block. But the timing of it was, there's your guard pulling. Now here's Harris, 79, working. And there's that cut block, taking people's legs right out from under them. That's, in a sense, unique to the 49ers. Other teams haven't emphasized cutting people down all across the field. And we've seen it over and over today. Our first down is Tom Rathman. He's to the 30-yard line. Jeff Wright got to him. So often in professional football, as the years pass, everyone begins to play standing up very physically knocking each other around but you have to you have to have sort of a throwback approach utilized by the teams many many years ago paul brown emphasized cutting people down at the point of attack craig yeah. gets a hand as he comes out but uh there has been accusations against you and against Seifert and the 49ers that that's dirty football cutting down around the leg. It's uncomfortable football, Dick. Very uncomfortable for the defensive players to be cut down. But it's well within the rules. There's another cut block. Terrence Flagler from Clemson getting a rare chance to carry the ball. He's only lugged it 17 times this year. Number one pick a couple of years ago. And to this point, uh, would have to rate in the disappointing category. Well, if he played regularly, I think he could become one of the top running backs in the, in the sense of uh, making the thousand-yard threshold uh, because he is quick enough and he is uh, uh, able to make people miss and he is strong enough. But he has had real problems converting, in a sense, to being a backup player behind an all-pro in Roger Craig, and he hasn't lived with that very well. Hasn't set with him very well, and it's affected him. Zach Blackler left the team, did he not, earlier this year? A third and three, it's Flagler following his blocks, and he'll be very close to a first down. Got a blitz up inside by the Bills that time, and Flagler and the entire offensive line got outside of it in a sense. Both the pulling guard, pulling tackle, got outside of it. And that will be the end of the third quarter. I don't know they've called time with one second to go to uh, measure for a first down, so it'll be... Uh, First down, San Francisco, fourth and inches. As they bring in the chains. And as soon as they make the measurement, and it is another 49er first down. So uh, interception by Romanowski led to a quick touchdown by Craig in the lead 7-3. And now on the ensuing kickoff, Harmon's fumble, controversial though it was, recovered by the 49ers, and now they have a first down at the Buffalo 22, and now the end of three at Candlestick. 49ers growing in command. San Francisco 49ers, less than a touchdown worth of points from a perfect year, beaten by the Rams 13 to 12, beaten by Green Bay 21-17. They are the dominant team in the NFL as they endeavor to repeat their Super Bowl championship. Flagler hit by Carlton Bailey, number 54, second-year linebacker from North Carolina. Well, this is really getting seasoning for a number of players. We've seen Chuck Thomas at center, Terry Tausch at guard. We've seen Steve Wallace in, who's been one of the better offensive tackles until his injury in the Super Bowl. 
So we've seen the offensive line utilizing everybody. Flagler at running back, and of course, Young at quarterback. And Jamie Williams at tight end. So they're getting all the exposure they can to prepare themselves in critical situations in the playoffs. Second and seven with Rathman, the running back. That's Jamie Williams, the tight end. And he's wide open, but they go to another man open, Taylor. And he's finally wrestled down at the two-yard line. And it took two men to get him there. Odoms was the first to make the hit. And it appeared Taylor was going to rip away for the score. Well, Taylor again got inside of Odoms. <laughs> Bless his heart, Odoms has, has had a real tough time with these things today because they're running slant patterns. Odoms with no help. And Taylor getting up underneath him right here with a nice move. Now he has a step on him. Odoms is in trouble to make a play because he has so far to reach. The safety's not getting there. Those are just uh, very well executed plays. Graham said that, that Taylor's so bottom heavy, you can't tackle him. He's very strong. Good low center of gravity. Young. Touchdown. those quick feet of Young. There was a breakup or breakdown in the play itself. Young wanted to sprint left. He ran into one of his running backs. You see him run into Rathman right there. He has nowhere to go, but uh, Flagler does a nice job of blocking. Now watch his speed and quickness, and then he goes for it. Very few quarterbacks in football are so quick they can make those kind of moves. Quite a versatile athlete. He shoots baskets and plays golf right-handed, kicks right-footed, but plays a game, as we see it, left-handed. Kofer adds the extra point, and 61-year-old head coach Marv Levy watches his Buffalo Bills sink to a 14-3 deficit. And we'll return to San Francisco after these messages from your local station. Steve Young and Jerry Rice, a serious conversation on the sidelines. Young scrambling in for the touchdown. Pass interception, the fumble, both on Buffalo's half of the field lead to two quick 49er scores, and it's 14 to 3. 13 and a half minutes left for Buffalo. Things getting serious on the far sidelines as Kofer kicks it off. Don Beebe will take the touchback at the 20. Tonight on NBC. A classic Mickey's Christmas Carol, the animated version of the Christmas Carol. Scrooge Duck, my five-year-old Nicole. Boy, she'll be, hope we'll get home in time to be able to watch it with her. <laughs> Can and, I see it? <laughs> and Jillian and Sister Kate. And then the Sunday night movie, Desperado Badlands Justice with Alex MacArthur as Duel McCall. That's all tonight on NBC. Well, there's a duel right now. Jim Kelly is going to have to bring this team back to get it done this year. This is a critical game. Kelly goes to work. Haley after him. Breaks out of the tackle, and Kinnebrew fumbles the reception. He had it, but couldn't pull it in. Well, Jeff four, Brooks. Dick, 49er quickness on defense really demonstrates itself. Now, they don't have Michael Carter. They've lost Jim Farnhorst. Uh, they've lost other people. Eric Wright, n any number of players. But the point is, their quickness on defense is too much for the Bills right now. Their offensive line is not able to handle their quick people in Kevin Fagan, Pierce Holt those kind of players Haley in particular Bill started well with 119 yards but since then they have been shut down out of the backfield of Thurman Thomas and nothing but red shirts out there Jim Burt the former giant first to make the hit and Matt Millen out there too two people that have joined the club and and been part now part of this scenario San Francisco the best record in the NFL in the 80s in December and the Bills at 9 and 24 the worst report card why Bill why are the gee I don't know I can't Bills. speak, well, how I about can't the speak Bills? for the Bills I, really can't. <laughs> I don't want to know about they, the they Bills. just haven't developed the depth of character as a team and Marv Levy's attempting to do that at this time this is why this game's so critical Wide open is Reed, but it's intercepted. Roddy Lott gets the carom. Lott with a record interception. 
And he's trying to turn it into six. He gets to the eight-yard line. Number 48 for Lott to break the tie with Jimmy Johnson all time. Did Lott want a touchdown here? He had a chance for one. That would have been a record, too. The ball was overthrown. It's that simple. Reed got his hands on it, and then it popped right back to 42. Those are so tough, so tough. And it looked like, uh, was it Pollard or, or uh, Griffin who made that big hit on Reed? But now Lott's looking for six right here, because that would be another record. Ken Hull, the center, is the man injured on the play for Buffalo as he made the tackle of Ronnie Lott. Well, it's that depth and that experience and that winning, not atmosphere as much as winning disciplines over the years the 49ers have developed all through their team. It just it stratifies the entire team. We asked Matt Millen, the former Raider who has a couple of Super Bowl rings, about the difference between the Raiders and 49ers and he said no 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 it's the likenesses you know the good teams I played on with the Raiders are like these good this good team in San Francisco they expect to win I mean it's not even a thought well I hope we can or let's really try to they expect to win every game from the eight yard line first and goal that's a third turnover now almost in successive possessions for Buffalo and Jerry Rice has a touchdown his 16th of the year leads the NFL. Well, Odoms has been the target all day. Odoms is a physical man that tries to take people on at the line. We've seen Taylor get past him. Now Rice gets past him to the outside. Beautiful throw, by the way. I could see, I'll tell you, there was a problem on the field a minute ago. I noticed, Dick, uh, Rice was a little upset. He didn't get the ball on that scramble that Young made for the touchdown. We saw Young talking to him. So they made up their mind to get the ball to Jerry right away. And I'm sure that's what George uh, Seifert's talking to him about right now. Meanwhile, Marv Levy with 12 minutes to go and down 21 to 3, trying to spirit his team. But San Francisco using two interceptions and a fumble to strike quickly for 21 points. This is a beautiful release. Look at Rice starting and then break out. Now he has Odom's off balance. There isn't anywhere to go, and the ball is thrown beautifully. What a turnaround. NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Black & Decker, quality tools that go at the top of everyone's gift list. And by Michelob Drive. Old taste with no aftertaste. Mick Dry refreshes completely. The 12 and 2 San Francisco 49ers showing their character today in a seemingly meaningless game for them. They played hard and well and lead 21 to 3 against a team that wants this game very much the Buffalo Bills. The good news for the Bills is even if they should lose today, a win next Saturday if the Jets would give them the AFC Eastern title. This is Don Beebe, the speedy rookie, with a flag down. Flagler gets him out of bounds at the 35-yard line. And the Bills want a penalty on a tackle out of bounds. That was a great job of coverage by Steve Hendricks and a Cal grad from across the way. Buffalo gets a penalty. Let's take a look at the final regular season weekend Buffalo Bills and the Jets 12 o'clock for NFL Live next Saturday and obviously that uh, is going to be a very important date for Buffalo and all the Bills fans around the country then on Sunday here's our lineup how about the Raiders at the Giants Kansas City Miami Miami losing today at Indianapolis things are tougher for them Indianapolis at New Orleans Pittsburgh Tampa Bay and Denver will play in San Diego Well, here comes the sack time for the 49ers. They know the Bills have to have to throw the ball. Andre Reed, he's got a half dozen catches. Chet Brooks makes the tackle after a six-yard gain. You know, Jim Kelly, we had that remarkable stat. When he throws an interception this year, the Bills are one and six 
And he's thrown two today. The Bills are really going to have to work at it, assuming they lose this game, to get it back together as a team because they still can do it, as you pointed out, Dick. Now they're going to have problems with uh, just the, the attitude on the team because it's not too hard to start turning on each other when things go poorly. We saw it last week. It can happen this week. Uh, Kelly upset at the play calling. Uh, Thomas upset at Kelly's remarks. Uh, it, goes, it can run rampant through a team. Players refused to talk to the press 48 hours before. Right. The game. That was a first down to Harmon. Flag down. Andre Reed out of bounds at the 50-yard line. Again, Pierce Holt was almost there. He was just on the edge of beating Devlin inside. Linesman threw the flag. Appear to be offside. The call, let's see against whom. Delay a game against San Francisco. So, hmm. Must be. Could have been. They were trying to substitute it right at the end. Oh, well, we have a chance as they sort this out, Bill. This is the first time ever you've been upstairs here at Candlestick in your 10, 11 years. Substitution, defense, 12 men on the field. It's declined. First down. Yeah, how's Dick, it look from up here? Dick, the last time I was here, I was a Bengal assistant. Cincinnati Bengals, we played the 49ers. That was like 1974. So how many years has that been? And it's uh, a little strange, I'll tell you. They do a great job with their press box. And uh, it's a great vantage point. I know that. <laughs> up here, uh, somewhere up here with us is Mike Holmgren, the offensive coordinator. I think he's done a great job of uh, even refining the skills more and more of... Uh, of the quarterbacks in the passing game. Did you watch the game Monday night? Just parts of it. You don't, you don't watch uh, the San Francisco games? Not, not as much as you'd think. Of course, we've been busy ourselves, but uh, when you break away from something, it's really tough to watch something you've spent your life uh, putting together. Well, that's a nice catch by the rookie Beebe, who played at Chadron State of Nebraska and Western Illinois. You know, Dick, I can really have empathy for people that retire from the, in their careers and professions how it feels to leave it you, you care so much for it so much of your life and yet it's very natural to do it happens to all of us Kelly good catch by Thurman Thomas and in this case in a way you can't walk totally away from it and just kind of close the blinds because you're involved with us in NBC Sports part of your duty is to watch all teams and that includes San Francisco oh sure and it's a great change and I have no regrets it's just a natural phenomenon. Ronnie Harmon getting a block from Richer using the sideline. Stops the clock. Out of bounds at the 22. 10 minutes and 17 seconds left. But a big mountain for the Bills to climb. They trail 21 to 3. Two other late games today. The Rams apparently are going to clinch. Well, they are not going to clinch a wild card apparently because Washington's coming back at Atlanta trailing by only three. Thomas brought down by Brooks at the 17-yard line. So Kelly now, and this is what we saw, well, going back all the way early in the season against Denver. Kelly just running the no-huddle shotgun offense, and he's, he's calling the entire show now. This isn't anything from the bench. He's in charge. Caught as he tried to sprint upfield by Pierce Holt. Holt saved a big gainer. There was no one downfield, and he reached out and knocked him down. Pierce Holt, his wife, Deanna, watches him today. There she is in the crowd. Uh, when well, you talk about a team, a marital team, Kelly. Oh, boy, he threw that up for grabs. Now, that's the kind of pass that just scares everyone who roots for Jim Kelly. He plays brilliantly, and there throws a ball so one white shirt with four red ones around him. Well, the, the Bills do okay with a four-receiver offense in their shotgun. They do okay. Their problem is converting from the running game to this form of passing. There isn't an awful lot in between. We saw the interception uh, just a short time ago. Uh, they haven't developed their play pass system of football as well as maybe they could have. Now it's fourth down and four and a half. There's a first down to Reed, the ever-dependable wide receiver. First and goal to the nine-yard line. Brooks and Johnny Jackson make the tackle as eight catches now for Andre Reed and 97 yards to lead everyone in that department. That gives him 80 catches for the year. Over the middle, and 
Thomas is to the one yard line. Michael Walder, Tom Homo, as uh, George Seifert using a lot of backup players in this game. Well, they had a full blitz up inside, and Kelly had what they call a hot receiver. In other words, throw the ball before the unblocked man gets to you, and he got it done. It was just a little underthrown, but he had the poise and presence to throw that ball and get it completed. Recognizing they need three possessions and three scoring possessions. Buffalo not wasting a second. And Kennebrew is stopped at the goal line. Does not get in. Well, it's not so much now whether he'll score or not. You'd almost assume he will, but it's the 40 to 45 seconds on the clock it'll take to run another play, another running play. So that is a key now for the Bills. They've got to score before they run any more time off that clock. They honestly should throw the ball here. Yeah, but Levy's saying, looking at that clock, just eating up precious time. 8.08, 8.07, 8.06, second and goal. Running plays, not scoring, will cost him the game. They almost have to throw. the touchdown run in by Kelly himself that stops the clock with 749 as they get a six and their first uh, rushing touchdown in four games well it's going to take a very efficient football team to do it here now you see really an option you fake Kelly's coming down the line with a swing back he fakes to him and Brooks is caught in between so well done possibly a little bit late uh, so now we're going to look at the Buffalo Bill defense. They're going to have to take over the game right now. Scott Norwood. And it's 21 to 10. 749 remain in San Francisco. Jim Kelly trying to spur his defensive teammates into a big play a turnover so he can get another chance that no huddle shotgun offense marched down it took them four minutes and 24 seconds to go the 78 yards and get the touchdown and now the kick the 49ers creeping close to midfield looking for a possible onside kick now we'll see the 49ers utilize their running game this is what George Seifert was speaking of before before it started, being able to run the ball in this situation, this is what it takes for a real champion, to use the clock, make first downs. Because Buffalo's already shown that they can score quickly with Jim Kelly throwing. If you could remove yourself, well, let's uh, look at the other scores while we have a, a problem here on the, there are the finals from earlier and a big win in overtime for Cleveland on a fake field goal. Green Bay sweeps Chicago, the Bears are six and nine. Indianapolis keeps hopes alive and hurts Miami, helps Buffalo. Detroit wins again. Rams are winning. Washington has rallied three touchdowns late in Atlanta. Anderson is brought down at the 38-yard line. Let's talk about George Seifert as we uh, watch him as he uh, looks on at the score by Jim Kelly of Buffalo. If Can you remove yourself far enough from Seifert to say if you were just an observer now and you watch Seifert coach, you watched his practices, you watch him in a game, could, could you make an evaluation? What is your impression? Well, he's a hands-on coach. He manages the game beautifully. He's on top offensive de defensively. He doesn't let our mo emotion guide him or, or afford him the, those, those disadvantages of not making good decisions. He deals well with the players. He's, he's one of the fine coaches in the game right now. Could be one of the most effective in the league, uh, starting with his first year. The give is to Henderson. Keith Henderson from Georgia gets a couple of yards. He told me yesterday that uh, the one thing that, I mean, he learned a lot of things from you, he said, but the one thing that he's really used uh, and it's almost a daily thing is the flexibility. You got to get the job done. He said it's what Walsh used to do. Got to get the job done. And if you can't do it the way you're doing it now, then be flexible and do it in another way because there's got to be a right answer. Well, whatever it is, <laughs> he's got the best formula in football at this point. This is the best team and it's the best coach. Well, the AFC side just wondering who's going to stand up. Is it Denver or will it be somebody else? Young. Oh, Radisak on a ball 
call that Young was trying to throw away, but yet make it look close enough that it wouldn't be a grounding penalty, and Scott almost meat-hooked that one. If Scott had gotten just a little lucky with that catch, that's what Buffalo needed, just a chance to get back in it around the 50-yard line. But as it stands, if uh, the 49ers punt, it'll be almost impossible to get back into the game. Well, it they need a break. That's all there is to it. Did stop the clock with 6.55. Buffalo does have all three of its timeouts left. And Kelly seems to be very uh, much in control and very effective out of that no huddle shotgun. He likes it. He runs the, the offensive call making. Third down. This is Flagler outside. And a good tackle by Carlton Bailey that might have denied a first down. Well, that was good pursuit by Bailey. He had to stay with it because Flagler is swift. And Flagler read the blocking well. He just barely missed it, but Bailey's speed allowed him a, an opportunity to make the play. Well, back close enough that uh, Johnny Greer says we're going to measure. Reminder to our viewers, we'll be selecting our Budweiser Most Valuable Player at the conclusion of today's game. And it is short by that much, fourth down. And here comes Barry Helton to punt. Well, I guess they could try to block the punt. Not likely to, that they can get that done. Or the return. The field position is what hurt them. The 49ers were able to move the ball just far enough that Buffalo has almost too far to go to score twice. But if they can get one in and then get lucky, I guess is what it's going to take. Well, that's what happened with the 49ers Monday night. They were able to muster that right. kind of rally at Los Angeles. Again, I... I repeat it but Buffalo is when they get on that plane going home if they lose it's going to be a moment of truth for all of them they can bring their team back together they're still capable of doing it Elton to Mickey Sutton and great Sutton coverage gets to the 19 yard line. just great coverage Dick they had everybody there and of course they were trying to block it so the coverage people were allowed to get down the field Steve Hendrickson Steve and Bill Romanowski made the tackle. Well, he's one I really like coming out of Berkeley, Cal Berkeley. He's smallish. He's much like the Billy Ring role that the, that, uh, the 49ers had in the early 80s. Billy Ring, a fine little fullback from uh, BYU. Well, Hendrickson takes that role in special teams. All right, here's Buffalo, 6.39 to go. They trail 21 to 10. Kelly goes to work, and he hits BB. A first down, and he stops the clock across the 30-yard line. That is one fine pass. He just leaned into that and was right on the money. At some point in his career, Kelly can become a great player. He really can. Last off last year, he was uh, one of the very best, but to get all those skills that are necessary. This one is to Reed. He fumbles the ball. 49ers recover. Michael Walter has it, and with it, goes a lot of hopes for Buffalo. Don Griffin, number 29, was the man who made the hit and jarred the ball free. Well, we, when they get on the plane, they're going to all have to settle back, relax for the five-hour flight. But when they come back to work, they're, as a team, they're going to have to sit down and make up their mind. These kind of things can be overcome. They can still win their division. That puts them right in the middle of the playoffs. Griffin stripping it away, and of course the schedule maker was kind to Buffalo. They play one of the worst teams in football, the Jets, next Saturday. Reed, with now notice the fumble, had nine catches, 106 yards, and on turnovers, San Francisco has scored the full seven each time. All four mistakes happening on Buffalo's side of the field. Flagler dragged down by Tally. San Francisco, you agree, of course, Bill Walsh with most everyone around the country, Joe Montana or whoever's running the ship, Steve Young today, obviously the best team in the game, but you were the best team in the game a couple years ago when you uh, hosted Minnesota here. Right, in 1987, we were 13 and two. We just blew through everybody right th through the season and then we're stunned by Minnesota. That's always possible, but the experience of having that having occurred will probably help the 49ers. They can remind each other of it. 
second down. 13 on the ground and up the middle as they protect the football do the 49ers and chew more time off the clock as Henderson and now Buffalo will spend a timeout. 528 left in the game. Andre Reed has had a big game but unhappy with himself. That last fumble may have uh, destroyed any comeback hopes. So I hope you like my little Christmas Well, thank you. Here. I'll have to re repeat in kind with you. Well, wait, wait you know, first I want to talk about Marv Levy. When you were a, a rookie coach with him, he was coaching at California. Right. He told us a story, and here's left-hander Walsh. He said, I'd go in, and he'd be writing all kinds Marv of plays. Marv would be racist. <laughs> <laughs> he would. <laughs> and uh, Ted Bartsabrota was in the room. He says, he's still Same a racist. still happening. <laughs> <laughs> so Bill Walsh uh, had the quick plays, but the heady coach said, hey, not they too weren't much. That, uh, maybe they weren't that good at in those days. Flagler. And he has a first down inside the Buffalo 30. And now the 49ers can just force the Bills to spend their timeouts and run the clock away. Well, this is good for Flagler because he's been an unhappy guy on the bench. He gets a chance to demonstrate to the, the fans and to the country that he can carry the ball right with Roger Craig. Boy, the depth of this San Francisco team, and we're experiencing it today as, uh, in essence, uh, George Seifert is using every available player. A lot of them were not available. Montana didn't dress. Keena Turner didn't dress. Uh, McKayer didn't dress. Uh, he's giving his other support players a chance. Eric Wright will not play. Wagner using his speed to get outside. And then he's crunched at the 29-yard line by Bruce Smith. Well, they're going back to the summer people trying to project on the Super Bowl and 49ers got a lot of votes but on the AFC side uh, at that time the Bills were the team on the come everyone felt that off their experience in the playoffs last year going to Cincinnati coming close that the Bills would be the AFC team and now they're uh, four and a half minutes away from eight and seven well you just can't count on making it the next year just because you come close uh, Marty Schottenheimer had that at Cleveland you know he almost made it to the championship game and then he almost made it again and he missed the uh, Super Bowl and Sam White is suffering from it this year so one great season doesn't make another you have to come right back and produce again and that's what Seifer's done with the 49ers has come right back with a with a, a great football team no question about it but win again and Marv can bring him Marv Levy can bring his team back this year as I say if they can get it back together if they can put it together and win the last game, then they just go in the playoffs. And as you know, Dick, once you're in the playoffs, your record is, is zero and zero. Well, and the good news for Buffalo, again, is if they win next week against the Jets, they're not a wild card. They get a whole week off. They get that luxury. Uh, a lot of pluses out of being the division champion. If they, get, if they get Bennett back, which I assume they will, and Conlon's playing, uh, that that will help uh, immensely because Bennett com coming from one side of the defense and Sim Smith from the other it creates a little different scenario for an offense to deal with uh, in, in talking uh, with Walt Corey he reminded us that with Bennett's on one side they're just having a very difficult time doubling up on Smith on the other plus that they have some other Smurless and Bentley tally they have some excellent players on this team They've been caught uh, in coverage with Odoms having to cover some great receivers and not quite getting it done in this game. They'll have to deal with that. He's on Rice, bottom of your picture now. Third and five. Flagler. And he doesn't get there, Daryl. Tally and Nate Odoms make the tackle. Buffalo spends its final timeout with 3.30 left. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the San Francisco 49ers and the National Football League is prohibited. The game is property of the National Football League, Buffalo Bills, and San Francisco 49ers, all rights reserved. That last play was the classic 49ers sweep that goes back many, many, year, many years in professional football. Uh, but the key's always been the block of the fullback. And that time, uh, Keith Henderson attempting to make that block doesn't have the skill of the, or the skill of the block itself down well enough, and they couldn't get him uh, to block tally very well. But uh, and, uh, here's Kofer in the field goal unit on, Bill. Now, this surprises me. Another three points really isn't going to make that much difference for San Francisco, and yet you, you give the Buffalo Bills a chance at a block that might give them uh, 
a yeah. freak touchdown. Yeah, they, this one's a little different uh, strategy than, I, than I've seen. 44-yard attempt by Cooper. He gets it away, and it is no good. So that also will give Buffalo a little better field position as they'll get the ball at the line of scrimmage. Well, 21 to 10 the score. You could afford to do that, Dick, I guess, with that 14-point lead. But if it were a seven-point lead, you'd have to punt. Well, it was. It's only 11-point lead. Yeah, that's right. I'd miss the score again. We go revert all the way back to that first <laughs> well, game we did. Hey, nobody's <laughs> perfect. I keep telling you, no one is perfect. <laughs> oh. 21 to 10 with 3.26 to go. 27-yard line, but that drive by San Francisco after the fumble chewed up all of the Bills' timeouts. Now you get to see your prevent defense, three pass rushers. Here comes the screen. Ronnie Harmon. Getting out of bounds at the 32. That was a wise choice. He might have made another five or six yards more going upfield, but the timeout is uh, much more precious at this point. That time Hull came out as a blocker. He just ran right past uh, a defender on the screen. Just looked right past him. Kelly guns the ball to Beebe. Was he inbounds? Yes. At the 46-yard line, 14-yard play, first down. He's developing into a tough little receiver, Beebe, and you've got to respect his speed. He's the fastest on the team. Well, the 49ers didn't have any number of players today, Keenan Turner in particular, uh, but Pete Cooper didn't play. Larry Roberts didn't see any action, so they still have a lot of talent outside of the men you've seen today. Thurman Thomas can't get to the sidelines, tackled at the 48-yard line, San Francisco territory. After a gain of five or six, Walter and Brooks made the stop. Michael Walter, there is one of the unheralded players on a great team he just gets it done leads them in tackles and is always in the right spot well he's definitely a pro bowl quality player kelly throws it over the head of thomas as he was scrambling you have to account for people like mike walter on a football team he gives you a lot of mobility he runs about a 4 7 40. he's big and active very bright guy but more importantly he has stamina resourcefulness and he can play the entire season, rarely missing a play. And he can he... do everything you ask. Rush the passer, cover on a pass. Dump off to Thomas. But goes after him, Walter again, and he's got him at the 40. It is a first down for Buffalo. Walter's also proud to be an Oregon Duck. Oregon had not been at a bowl game in 26 years, won the Independence Bowl last night against Tulsa. That'll make Ahmad Rashad happy as well. Kelly runs it out of bounds at the 40, no gain. Gee, Ronnie Harmon should have made a block right there, Dick. He had a chance to cut off the pursuit people, and he dodged the, the defender who was uh, pass rushing. Not very nice, Ronnie. 2.15 yeah. left. Boy, you got to pay the price, Ronnie. That's all there is to it. He had a big lineman, I admit, but he had to make that block. He just forced Kelly to run out of bounds. Now that's something that we have learned in the last week, how the 49ers block downfield, especially those wide receivers. And uh, Matt Millen said, Jerry Rice's blocks on Taylor's touchdowns last Monday night were, one, were the real highlight of his pro career. Underneath to Reed, gain of about eight. Romanowski, the tackler, and that'll take it down to the two-minute uh, timeout unless they really get a playoff in a big hurry. No, they're not going to be able to. The Bills in a game that would clinch the AFC East trail 21-10. like to remind you from San Francisco, the executive producer of NBC Sports is Terry O'Neill. Coordinating producer NBC's football coverage, Ted Nathanson. Today's telecast has been produced by John Paratsis, directed by John Gonzalez. NFL Live, produced by David Neal. NFL Live, directed by Bucky Guns. NFL Live News producer, Ricky Diamond. Technical directors, Lenny Stucker, Richard Sansevier. Our thanks to Joe Costanza and company in the booth, Steve Bazika, Dave Ron, Al Barba, Jim Walker, Rush Schneiderman. There are all the rest of the men and women. NBC Sports to brought you the pictures and sounds from Candlestick, where, if nothing else, one has to sit back and uh, admire uh, the team of the 80s, the San Francisco 49ers. And 
as I watched on Monday as they rallied. I really felt uh, the sense of greatness, Bill Walsh, that um, you know we're, we're looking at something that might be one of the greatest uh, teams of all time, the way they're going. No question about it. They've got everything it takes. Now the Bills trying to come up with a big play. No timeouts remaining. We're in the final two minutes. Thurman Thomas gets it to the 16-yard line. Well, a score here would help the Bills just psychologically because they can be so depressed, so frustrated getting back on that play. And yet their whole their season can start fresh if they can win next week. Kelly over the middle. Harmon, little reversal. Can't get out of bounds, and down he goes at the eight-yard line. Kelly needs a quick score and then an onside kick. As they get into that, uh, don't waste a second, almost a panic offense. It's almost a panic offense, but Kelly's handled it very well. This is a part of their game that's been very effective. And talking to Marv Levy, he's been concerned about their ability to score late in the game. 49ers have called a timeout. 1.15 to go, and that's a break for Buffalo. They get a chance to talk it over. <laughs> yeah, the key to this game for San Francisco has been the turnovers. Trailing 3-0 until the middle of the third quarter. Bill Romanowski with an interception in Buffalo territory led to the first score. And a series of fumbles and interceptions, four turnovers in all. Three of them became touchdown San Francisco. 21-10 to score. 115 left. Kelly has a man open, Thomas, but he's out of the end zone. No touchdown. Well, Dick, you asked about the timeout a few seconds ago by the 49ers. They were in a prevent defense being backed down toward their own goal line, and they had to get their regular defense in. Now, this was no way it could have been caught in bounds, but it was a well-thrown ball. Thomas just wasn't alert enough to the in line. So third down and two. Kelly under pressure. Throws it up for grabs, and it's caught by San Francisco. Chet Brooks, the third Niner interception. And Jim Kelly's slump continues. Well, the offensive line of the Bills is going to have to play more physical football. That time, there was this blitz up inside, a, a line stunt and a blitz, and they pushed so far into Kelly, he had nowhere to go but to throw the ball over the top and hope for a touchdown. That's why you got an interception. But the line itself was just playing too soft. Either that or the 49ers were just too quick for the, for the offensive line. So 102, it'll take a snap, maybe two snaps of the ball, and this one then will be over. This is just a kneel down for San Francisco as the 49ers go 13 and 2. It's the first time in NFL history that a first year coach has won 13 games. Well, this is going to be it. There's one kneel down by Young with a minute to go, and the 45 second clock starts, so they'll have to run one more snap. And then they'll have the victory 21 to 10. There's Bob McKittrick uh, next to George. Bob McKittrick, one of the best offensive line coaches in the game. And he's a man that's uh, developed the skills that these offensive line with the 49ers demonstrate each week that everyone gets so upset at. But that's the game of football. There's Joe Montana in the dark shirt. And he doesn't look at, well, you're, you were just staring at a great competitor and what he and Steve Young have done for each other, the way they compete, has helped to push each other to even better things. Time for our Most Valuable Player Award, sponsored by Budweiser, number 33. Today's MVP, Roger Craig of the 49ers. Budweiser will make a contribution to the United Way on behalf of all the MVPs selected in today's game. Now the Buffalo Bills go home with their third consecutive loss and they're now eight and seven and yet are just one win away from the AFC Eastern title that would uh, give them a week off and